Hello and welcome to a Maths with Harry lesson. In this video, we're going to have a look at graphs of sine, cosine and tangent. Sine, cosine and tangent are your three trig functions. Sine is sine of x, it's actually written S-I-N. Cosine is the full name for cos and then tangent is the full name for tan. And you need to be able to draw the graphs. The graphs are just sort of a map of all the values, basically. If you were able to calculate every single value, and that's obviously not possible because, you know, you can keep zooming in onto the graph and finding new values. But if you could draw out all those values, you would get the graphs that we're going to look at in a minute. And we can see the first one here is the graph of sine x. So it's the graph in terms of an actual equation. It's y is equal to sine of theta. So this axis here is your theta axis and this is your y axis. Okay, so here we've actually got, and you can see, I've actually put degrees on all the numbers on this horizontal axis here. This is your theta axis. All of these are angles. And then on your y axis here, y is sine theta. This is what sine theta equals at different points along the graph depending on the value of theta. We can see we have two pieces of information here. We have sine x repeats every 360 degrees. And we have that sine x has a maximum at 1 and a minimum at minus 1. Before we have a look at what those actually mean, let's have a look at the shape of the graph. Here, I have the graph from minus 180 degrees all the way up to 720 degrees. We can see if we just start at zero here, the graph goes up and it goes all the way to one at 90 degrees. And then at that point, the graph comes back down. So if we were to just focus on that part of the graph, it kind of looks like a negative quadratic. OK, that's the shape that we get for that grey shaded bit there. And then at 180 degrees, the graph crosses through the horizontal axis or the theta axis and it starts to come back down and it comes back down all the way until it reaches 270 degrees where it's at minus one and then it starts to come back up. So we have this that kind of looks like a positive quadratic, okay? We've got those two shapes and that there is one full sine graph. That is the shape of one full sine graph from zero all the way to 360, okay? And it's actually really important to note here that the sine graph repeats every 360 degrees. So we've been through, if you like, a full rotation, 360 degrees. If you think about it in terms of circles, we've been from zero degrees all the way around to 360 degrees. And that is the shape of the graph. So because sine repeats every 360, we're just because we're at 360 degrees here, we're going to get this shape again, which we can clearly see if I highlight, and in fact, let's do it in a green. If I highlight this bit in green, it's the exact same shape as the gray. And it's that full rotation there from 360 degrees to 720 degrees, we've done another 360 degrees. That's what we've passed through along the horizontal axis. So we've got another full sine graph there. And that just continues because it repeats every 360 degrees. We get one full rotation, that's 360 degrees, another full because that's another 360 degrees. And if we were to carry on this axis, it just continues and continues. So if I just get rid of the highlighting on here from the graph, and I'm just going to put in these lines here. That there is the y-axis. That is at zero degrees, and we can see that on there because uh, it's at the origin. Then this second line can go at 360 degrees, okay? And we can see between that, what we get is that rotation there or that full sine graph. And then another 360 degrees will have that shape again because it repeats every 360 degrees like that. Let's get that in the middle. Perfect. OK, so there's our rotation and that just carries on and it actually carries on this way. So in the positive direction, but it also carries on in the negative direction as well. 
if we were to kind of extend this graph a little bit, we would get something that kind of looks like that, okay? It would have a maximum, again, at one there. It would come down to minus one, go up, and then go all the way, and it would hit the uh, horizontal axis, it would hit the x-axis, or the theta axis, again, at minus 360 degrees, because we will have a full rotation at minus 360 degrees, because it repeats every 360. So it repeats in the positive, and in the negative direction. And of course here on the positive as well, we'd also have it carrying on. It, ne it never stops, it will just always continue that kind of sign shape. Okay, it also has maximums at one and a minimum at minus one, and those are just the maximum and minimum values of the y-axis. We can see the graph because it's just repeating that shape every single time, repeating that shape again, repeating that shape. It never has anything less than minus one here. We can see there's a minimum, there's a minimum, there's a minimum. Just like minimums on quadratics, it's quite similar. There's another minimum, minimum. And we can see all of those are at minus one, and that just repeats. So it has a minimum, I'll highlight that in red, at minus one. And it also has a maximum at one, and we can see that just by looking at all the maximums on there. That's a little bit bigger because I did that freehand, but you get the gist, okay? This shape is just repeated, and it has a maximum at, my, uh, at one, sorry, so all the maximums are at one. There's another maximum. Okay. So, uh, this information here really is useful when you're doing some certain questions. Say, for example, you know that, well, we can look from the graph here, sine of 90 degrees, okay, sine of 90 degrees, we can just work out what that is using the graph. We can just go up or go down, but here we're going up because the graph is above at 90 degrees, and go across. So, we'd go up at 90 degrees and across to uh, the, well, we'd go a little bit further actually, we would go about there and go across to 1 and we can see that there, sine of 90 is 1 because we've just got that from the graph. But this information is useful if you've got a question like, you know that sine 90 is 1, like this here. Uh, work out all the other values, and not all of them, maybe three others, where sine is also equal to 1. Well, we can just use the graph. We can use what we know about the repetition of the graph. It repeats every 360 degrees, so it's going to be at 1 in another 360 degrees, and then another 360 degrees. So we can just add 360 onto this graph, or this part of the graph here. So we can just add 360 degrees onto 90, and we can see that from the graph just there. Go up, hitting there, go across, it's at one, and that is because 90 plus 360 degrees gives me this 450, and that's because of the repetition. So uh, sine of 450, is also equal to 1. And we could add another 360 degrees onto that if we wanted to and get whatever it would be here, okay? So you can work out the repetition just by using simple, you know, um, exact values that you know here. Sine 90 is 1, for example. Okay, let's have a look at this under here. What we've got here is just some critical values. Sine theta is 1, and I've just done this for you, when theta is 90, 450, etc. And also negatives as well. It will be 1 at minus 270, because we can take off 360, because the repetition goes in the negative direction as well. Uh, we can look at another critical value of 0, and that is, if I highlight that in grey, that's all of these points here. It's just where the graph intersects the theta axis, the horizontal axis. So that's at 0 degrees, 180 degrees, 360, 450, 720, and the negatives as well, minus 180, uh, for example, and those are just some of them there, and it does say etc. Those will always give you sine of minus 180, sine of 0, sine of 180, sine of 360, etc. will all give you a y value of 0. And then minus 1 as well, it's going to be minus 1, sine of minus 90 is minus 1, sine of 270 is minus 1, because we can just follow straight down and across to 
the graph. Minus one will also be there as well. So hopefully that's not too tricky. Let's have a look at the graph of cos x. It's actually pretty similar. The graph of cos x, here we're actually looking at sin x. The graph of cos x is a little bit different, but actually very similar. Now I'm trying to work out how many graphs I have here. Am I gonna be able to select it? Yes, I am. What we do is, if you ever get confused, think about the sine graph crossing through zero. Think about that. And then the cos graph is just moved over to the left a little bit. Let me show you. The cos graph, and I'm trying to select it all together, and it doesn't seem to be wanting to do it. Come on. There we go. Let's move it over like that. Okay, and it's got to cross through the points quite nicely, so I'm just making sure that it does. It's not perfect, but that will do. That, in fact, there you go. That is the cos graph. This blue graph here. So this red dotted graph is the sine graph, and we just looked at that up here. We move it all 90 degrees to the left to get the cos graph. Okay, so what we have is this shape here now. It's, is the, it's the exact same shape, but it's a, at a different place on the axes. We've got the exact same thing again because we're just moving the graph to the left from the sine graph. Move the sine uh, 90 degrees to the left gives you the cos graph. So it's still going to repeat every 360 degrees. It just repeats at a different point. We can see at the zero, we are there. Then at the uh, 360 degrees, that is our first repetition. And we're looking at the blue graph here. And then the next repetition will be, and I'm just trying to work it out. Where will it be? Let me think. It's going to be there. Okay, because this graph can kind of continue like that. Okay. So what we have here is we have still a maximum at one and a minimum at minus one. It passes on the y-axis, and in fact, we'll write that in and we'll write our theta axis in. It passes through uh, the y-axis at one, comes down, passes through 90 at, um, at y is zero, comes all the way down to a minimum of minus one, just like it said there, maximum of one. Then it comes back up, through 270 degrees and then it goes to 360 degrees at one. And we know it's going to be one at 360 degrees because we have that repetition. We start at one, we come down and repeat 360 degrees. So where we started was zero degrees at one. So we have to finish in the next 360 degrees at one. Hopefully that makes sense. These are our kind of repetition lines. We can see the blue is the same within those yellow lines, okay? The red dotted graph is the sign graph that we've just looked at, and I'm just showing you that so we can see a similar shape, but it's just translated to the left for the cos graph. Okay, let's have a look at some key points on the graph. Cos theta is equal to one. At what points or what value of theta will that be the case? Well, it was theta is equal to zero, 360 degrees, etc. And we can see those if we do them in a red. That's a bad idea, actually. Let's do them in a green. We can see that because, do that a bit neater. That's better. Because uh, at zero, the graph is there. We're looking at the blue graph. 360, the graph is there. 720, the graph is there because we kind of have that shape continuing down like that. And we can see all of those green dots, if we follow along to the y-axis, it's where y is equal to one. So those are our theta values for cos of theta. Remember, y is cos of theta, that's the graph we're looking at, is equal to one. If we look at zero, it's just the point where the blue graph intersects the horizontal axis. So minus 90, 90, 270, 450, 630, etc. in the positive and the negative direction. Here would be minus 270. And I've just took the positive ones here. So cos of theta is zero when we are on the horizontal axis. So these values of theta. 
theta is 90, and it should pass through a little bit neater than that. Theta is 90, theta is 270, theta is 450 degrees, and then etc. We've got 630 as well that we can see on the graph. That is when cos um, theta is equal to zero. And then if we do, and I'll do a different colour, I will do a light blue here. If we've got cos theta equals to minus one, it's just at the points of the, or the theta values where we're at the minimum of the graph. So we can see we've got one there, a minimum there, a minus one there. And then we can just follow up to those points on the graph. And we can see, I've actually included a minimum here. Oh, sorry, a negative there. We've got minus 180 at minus one. Um, 180 degrees at minus 1, 540 degrees at minus 1. And again, we can see a similarity in what we're doing here. We can add 360 degrees on to get to the next point. Minus 180 degrees is minus 1. So when will it next be at minus 1? Well, we can add 360 degrees because of the repetition of the graph. And that will then be 180 Okay, let's have a look at the final graph, and it's a little bit different, this graph. We can see we've got quite a lot going on, so let's just have a look. We've got y is equal to tan of x, and this is the graph of the tangent function, tan for short, okay? Again, I will put on that this is the y-axis and that this is the theta axis, and again, we've got degrees on the axis here, so we can see that that is going to be an angle theta, y is equal to tan of theta repeats every 180 degrees. We can have a look at that in a minute. It has no maximum or min value. And hopefully you can see that if we just take this section here between those dashed lines, this section here, actually a little bit like quadratics, continues forever and forever down there. So it doesn't have, for y, a maximum or a minimum value. It doesn't make sense to say a maximum is 1 because, well, we can see there's 1 on the y-axis and I've got values much larger than 1. So it has no maximum or minimum value. And it has vertical asymptotes. Hopefully you remember what asymptotes are. It has them at every kind of uh, multiple of 90 degrees, apart from... Um, 180, we can, well maybe not every multiple actually, it has them at every 180 degrees if you keep adding 180 on from 90 degrees, if that makes sense. And we can see those on the graph, there's an asymptote at minus 90 degrees, there's an asymptote at 90, 270, 450, 630, and there's actually a reason why that is the case, but we'll have a look at that in a minute. And then between those asymptotes, we have this shape that kind of looks a little bit like the cubic function. X cubed has that similar shape. It kind of it comes up here and it goes all the way down as well, and it never touches this asymptote. It comes up there, and then it comes up, 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 all the way till it passes through zero. And then it starts to just sort of shoot off and never touch this asymptote either. This is a little bit of the graph. We also have a bit that comes down there like that as well. Maybe not so like that. Comes down like that. And this one also comes up like that. But I'm just showing you a certain part of the graph. Okay. Um, and really... That's kind of all we can say really about the tan graph. It looks a little bit more complicated than it actually is. It just has this shape and it has these asymptotes. Why are they asymptotes? We'll have a look at that in a minute, but let me show you a kind of structure of why it repeats every 180 degrees. If I was to put this on at zero, maybe not zero actually, let's put it on at 90, that's a bit nicer. Put it on at 90, then if we do 180 degrees from that, so 90 plus 180 degrees, that's 270 degrees. If we add another 180 degrees, that's 450. We can see we have repetition. This is between the first 180 degrees, we have that shape. Then within the next 180 degrees, we have this shape. And that can just carry on. We have this shape again with asymptotes either side, another asymptote and that shape again. And then we'd have an asymptote maybe about there, okay, for the graph to come up like that. 
Okay, now, why is it the case that there's asymptotes there? Well, think about where the asymptotes are. We will just have a look at this first one here, okay? That orangey red one. And that is when theta is equal to 90. So theta equals 90 degrees, and we know that y is tan theta. That tells me then that y will be tan of 90 degrees. And I have a calculator actually, so I'm going to put that into my calculator. Tan of 90 degrees. And we get an error. Now, why is that? We get an error. I don't know whether I've introduced this in the course yet or not, I don't think I have, but tan of theta can actually be written as sine theta over cos theta. And then a little proof as to why that is uh, an error is because that can be written as sine of 90 if we're working out what tan of 90 is, that's theta. Sine of 90, oops, divided by cos of 90. And we can actually work out what those are from the graphs. So let's do that. Let's have a look at what sine of 90 is. Sine of 90, we're going across to 90 degrees, up and across to 1. So sine of 90 is 1. And then cos of 90, remember we're looking at the blue graph here. Cos of 90 going down here across to 90 and that is then 0 because that's where the graph crosses 90 degrees. It's at 0. So we have 1 divided by 0. So that's why tan 90 gives you an error. And that's why we have these asymptotes here. Okay. Under this box, what does it say? Well, we, we can only really notice we have no minimum or we have no maximum. So we can only really note here from looking at the graph what tan uh, theta equals zero, what those theta values are. And it's just these values here. Zero, minus 180, 180, 360, 450, 720, etc. Okay, those are your values there for when tan theta is equal to zero. And again, like I said for sine, these uh, graphs are actually useful when you're looking at repetition. If I know that, for example, tan 90, uh, sorry, tan zero is zero, then it might say, uh, what other point or what other angle is tan of theta equal to zero? Well, it's at 180, it's at 360, because you can just add on 180, because that's when it repeats. So hopefully, that is not too complicated and you now know the graphs of sine, cos and tan.